most websites that you build are going to have a ton of typography and content stuffed into them. So let's take a look at some more typography elements so that way we can use them when we're coding HTML. Coming to our Figma design here, this is a really simple design. It's that way on purpose, so that way we can introduce some concepts. But most designs you're going to be working with are going to have a lot more information down the page. You might have like a feature section or an FAQ or an about, uh, tons and tons of information on these landing pages and, and other web pages. So we want to make sure we really understand how to work with typography and add more of that to the page. So let's go ahead, hop into our code and take a look at some other elements. Now, if we come over here and we change tabs, great. We've worked with H1 so far, and H1 is the biggest possible title that we can add to a page. Now, if we're following our semantic rules and being really diligent about those, technically, we're only supposed to add one H1 to a page at any given time. The logic being that there's only one thing that can be the most important thing. It's, a, it's a, a means of prioritization. We can't have many things competing to be the most important, so we're supposed to only have one. In practice, most people don't follow this, and it's not going to break or anything like that if you have multiple H1s on the page, but as a good semantic HTML practice, we try to have only one H1 on a page at any given time. Now, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but there are other uh, headings that we can have. So let's go ahead and, and start working with those. So what if we add an H2 and we close that and we say, hello, H2, great. And we can add up to six different types of headings here. So again, remember that trick from before, if we do uh, command or alt shift down, we can duplicate it. So instead of H2, why don't we say H3 this time? And we'll come all the way over here and we can do it again. We can do H4. And it's a good fingers on keyboard stuff. Good to practice this. See it for yourself. Make sure you have it. H5. Oops. And then we'll do H6 so we can see them all together right next to each other and see how the browser starts to interpret them. So these are the six types of headings that we can have. And there we go. We can see H2, H3, H4, H5, H6. This is actually really important to us as designers. I don't know if anyone ever explicitly told me that I can only have a text hierarchy down to six headings, but this is the limit from a technology standpoint here. We can get um, a little bit more creative, but that's kind of it. We, we can only have text hierarchies up to a level of six. Probably plenty for the vast majority of our needs, but it is a, a hard limit uh, from the technology side of things. So. And notice how what's happening over here in our browser. We've got H1 as the largest, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, um, all the way down there. So again, it gets pretty small, but this is something that we can leverage now as we're defining the text hierarchy of our page. The other thing uh, to keep in mind, that only one rule only applies to H1. So you can have as many H2s through 6s as you want. That's totally okay. It's really just that H1 that we want to have that limit on because again, how could you have more than one most important thing? The next element that I want us to take a look at is a paragraph. And this is sort of the meat and potatoes. The bulk of your content is going to probably be a paragraph. So this is for longer text blocks or a couple sentences or more. Um, and it's going to wrap up most of the content you'll have on the page. So we can say paragraph and we can say hello from the paragraph. And it's just a P, nice and simple to use give it a refresh, and we can see that this has been put on the page for us. Now, notice how the browser interprets this. It doesn't make it bold. It's just regular, um, but it is pretty large. I think it's about 16 pixels, uh, which is larger than all the H4s, H5s, and H6s. So it's interesting to kind of see where the default styles and what they look like, but this is the sort of hierarchy uh, that we can have. So most of your content is going to be in your paragraph, and then you can have as many different uh, headings interspersed with there as you want. So pretty useful here. And most of your page is going to be paragraphs. So we can, again, duplicate this using that trick as much as we want. And we can have a long page full of content. The last thing that I want to show you in terms of the, the basic um, text things are uh, lists. And lists are super, super valuable. We can do two types of lists. We can do a bullet list uh, in HTML that's referred to as an unordered list or a numbered list, which is called an ordered list in HTML. So uh, an unordered list is just UL. So we go ahead, type that in, UL, and now we have our element. 
And we need a way now to distinguish between all of the bullets in the list. And so we get another HTML element for that, and that's an li element or a list item. And so if we go ahead and we write that out, we can say li, and we can say one, and then we can duplicate this and say two, and we can do that again, and we'll say three here just so we can see it. Great, so this is our unordered list. Give that a refresh, and we have bullets now. So we got one, two, three, real nice there, and we can add this into our designs. This is a hugely, hugely popular way to represent information, so it's important that we, we understand it. Uh, I did mention we had those numbered lists as well. So why don't we go ahead, we'll just copy this whole thing here, and we'll add that below. And if we change this U to an O, that means ordered list. We can do the same thing here. Give this a refresh, and we can see now we have a numbered list. So we have different ways to represent this information. But again, we are providing semantic descriptive information to the browser so it can better interpret the content here. Now somebody can come in with a screen reader and understand that, okay, here's the heading, and then here's the content, and this is the list. This is becoming much more descriptive for them. Same way a computer, like a, um, a site crawler or an indexer can come in here and say, oh, this is the most important information on the page. Oh, this is all inside the header, so this is kind of preview content. This is in the main. This must be the, the body, the big meat and potatoes of the, uh, the page that we're looking at here. It's in the footer. Okay, this is kind of tertiary information that we, we don't need to know about so much. But again, the semantic language and information that we can encapsulate our content within is the markup language part of HTML here and hugely, hugely important as we're writing all of this syntax. So I hope this typography here kind of gives you a little bit more to work with as you're exploring uh, new designs and sort of practicing this on your own. This is going to be sort of the bulk of the majority of HTML you're going to be writing.